In this video, I will demonstrate how to uh, depart from a station in Flight of Nova and re-enter the atmosphere and land at a specific ground base. In this case, I have picked the base named Sermansky. And the reason I have picked that particular base is because, if you'll notice, uh, it has a latitude that is not zero. It is a little bit south of the equator, and so that means that we'll have a little bit more of a challenge than the ones that are on the equator. Um, the way that I plan on doing that is to re-enter along the equatorial line. So, <clears throat> the technique that I will use to re-enter is the same as how you would uh, do that for an orbital landing site, but then I will uh, stop my descent in the high atmosphere instead of on the ground, and fly in the high atmosphere a little bit south to land at this base. So hopefully that should make the video a little bit more interesting. Um, one thing that should be noted is that uh, these numbers, these two numbers, the longitude and latitude of the base, only appear in this UI, which is only available while you're docked at an orbital station. So you should, uh, for now, memorize them or write them down somewhere. I do hope that in the future this will get added to a UI that's available uh, elsewhere. Um, but at the moment when you're flying, the only reference you have to where your base uh, is is the uh, uh, that was weird uh, is the map view that displays here. It doesn't display when you're in orbit, only when you're in the atmosphere, and uh, all of the ground bases look the same. So it's quite uh, it's quite important to remember these two numbers. <clears throat> the longitude is also important uh, because it will tell you when to depart. And in my opinion, obviously there are lots of different ways to perform a re-entry. You can do it the way the space shuttle does, or modern, uh, you know, present day spacecraft do, where they use the atmosphere to kill most of their velocity. But this is a sci-fi future ship. It's got very powerful engines. And it also has in-orbit refueling, so we really don't need to do that. Um, the reason that the uh, the game cancels your time acceleration 3,000 kilometers ahead of the uh, base is so that you can re-enter that way if you'd like to, and it can be fun. The, the craft are certainly capable of re-entering that way. Um, but I prefer to uh, do a powered re-entry using the engines to slow down all the way. And for that sort of a re-entry, um, I have found uh, that about 6 degrees of separation is optimal for when to start the burn. Now that is not the same as when you should undock from the station. You need time to get in position to start your deorbit burn. But, anyway, conservatively, let's say that this station is at longitude negative 86 degrees, therefore we should start our burn at negative 92 degrees, and we are at negative 103, so let's get a bit closer before we end up. And we're pointing towards our prograde vector. 
So that means that our retrograde vector is all the way over this way. I didn't pay attention to what was above me. I hope I don't crash into some other part of the station while I'm doing this. Looks like we're safe. There's our retrograde vector. And the way I like to do this is to point at the retrograde vector, but down about 30 degrees. And we'll just wait till we're at 92. should be good. <clears throat> and we're just going to hold max throttle all the way through this entire descent down into the atmosphere. Now if you're trying to land at an equatorial station you should watch your inclination and make sure that it doesn't get too far off of zero. You can use the yaw controls left and right and see how it affects the inclination. In my case, I want to land south of the equator anyway, so a little inclination towards the south doesn't hurt that much. Now as our altitude approaches 150 kilometers, I'm going to angle the nose back up a bit. And we're still holding the throttle fully open. slowing our <coughs> orbital velocity. And as we enter the atmosphere, we're starting to enter the top of the atmosphere now, we can point up towards the retrograde vector all the way. And at this point, <coughs> as we get into the slightly thicker atmosphere, if you aren't pointing directly at the retrograde vector, at some point the RCS controls will not be able to uh, overcome the atmosphere anymore and you'll get flung around and point forward so that's why it's important to angle up towards the retrograde vector. Now I'm slowing down way too much here if I wanted to land at uh, on the ground right here I should not slow down anywhere near this much about 1500 meters per second is a good time to stop burning and point forward um, but I don't want to land here, I want to traverse a long way across the surface, which is why I picked this base to, to demonstrate this. So that's why I intent, uh, intentionally stopped my descent way in advance um, at about 60 kilometers of altitude. <clears throat> so that I can do a little bit of uh, traversing across the surface here. I don't want to get too fast. 60 kilometers, uh, the atmosphere is thick enough that you can get uh, way faster than you think you are going. So, um, I'm just going to get a little bit of speed and now that I've got some speed, I'm going to just use the atmosphere to sort of uh, cruise along in the high atmosphere, just maintaining a slight downward uh, flight path angle because we're relatively close to our target and using the throttle and pitch angle to keep us at, uh, at that descent angle. This sort of intermediate distance where it's, you know, several hundred kilometers but not thousands of kilometers is a good candidate for this kind of high atmosphere cruise. Not quite a suborbital flight. Um, but not just a short hop either. Now as we get close, yeah, I can switch the radar into short range mode. And I, ooh, that was unintended, intentional. 
Yeah, you see, that was what I was warning about. I didn't want to get so fast that I would uh, get this sort of re-entry heating on the way down. But I had to do that in order to make sure that we didn't overshoot the base. slight throttle to help our turn. And by the way, I used that radar range keybind. If you don't know, it's the very bottom of the flight command's radar range. Uh, that is different from the HUD mode keybind. You should be familiar with, uh, with those both. And now, uh, this is the speed that I would normally come in, but I'm going to just gun the throttle here and accelerate very fast because I want to demonstrate something else. Normally, I, uh, you wouldn't necessarily want to come in like this. But we're 20 kilometers away when we're about maybe 15 kilometers away or so is a good time to start your S turns if you're going quickly. And an S turn just looks like this. Some people point straight up to slow down, but you gain a lot of unnecessary altitude by doing that, so you can just do these sorts of turns back and forth to slow way down with respect to the Bit of a control problem there. With respect to the base, that's what I was going to say. And unfortunately, we did end up very high relative to these uh, landing pads. It's really not ideal because it makes it difficult to find your landing pad that you want to land at. But there we go. That's better. Now who decided to make these bases with giant metal spikes on them? I don't know, but they were obviously not a pilot. Anyway, um, that's all there is to it. I hope that was helpful, and good luck landing.